Stephen Pastis, looking up. Chapter 4. Toss some yellow yolk on the old oak tree. I know what you're going to say, which is that I promised my mother that if I went to the egg toss, I would be a good sport. But technically, that's not correct, because one, I hadn't sworn on the piñata's head, and two, seeing those happy kids with their parents was more than any reasonable person could take. Because for one thing, punches was my store, not theirs. And for another, their only qualification to even be in this contest was that they had a parent who didn't work Saturdays. And besides, even if one of them did win a shopping spree at punches, they wouldn't know a single thing about navigating those uneven floorboards, not to mention making sense of the store's unconventional layout, because in punches, the dolls weren't next to the ponies, they were next to the tanks. Why? Because that's the way Muffins wanted it. And don't even get me started on what Muffins' reaction would be to some kid scrambling like a maniac through his aisles. I half expect he would grab them by their orthodontic headgear and hurl them ungently into the good night. And I did not go gently into that good night either. Mostly because the whole thing was just so unfair. I mean, what had all those kids done to deserve an egg-tossing parent? Nothing that I could see. And they knew for a fact they didn't want that prize one millionth as much as I did. Nor did they need it, judging by the fancy new cars they poured out of at the park. And so, rather than watch any more happy kids or their parents, I did the next most logical thing. I chucked eggs at a tree. And I probably would have kept throwing eggs at a tree if I hadn't heard a voice from behind it. I wonder if you could do that somewhere else. And seen a face that I recognized. Daniel, I asked, what are you doing here? Who are you? He answered. Saint, I live across the street from you. You do? Yes, I replied. I came to your birthday party. Which I could tell from his blank stare was not registering. And so I introduced myself by saying one thing I didn't want to say. I'm the girl who stole your piñata. Oh, he said. I know you. And really, I didn't know what to do next, because on the one hand, I was upset he hadn't remembered me, and on the other hand, I was embarrassed about the thing he did remember, so I didn't know whether to drop the entire subject or apologize for everything, and so I took the middle course. I became unintelligible. I didn't mean to steal it, more like save it, protect it, like in a closet, like the knights and the damsels. I mean, they didn't have closets, nor cardboard, just castles and moats. Do you like knights? I like knights. And the past, and piñatas, and anything with a face, like the gnome, and the donkey, except dragons, all that fire. Faces, closet, tree. And at that point, I didn't even know what was happening. I was just spewing out random nouns like a typewriter gone rogue, because something about Daniel's round face made me dizzier than eating a bowl of Peppy Pops. Me on Peppy Pops. Fortunately, Daniel cut me off with a question that was direct but thoughtful. Why are you throwing eggs at a tree? And I even blew that. Because my mother breaks her promises! Huh? And forcing myself to get it together before I frightened him into fleeing, I took a deep breath and uttered something that could fairly be called a sentence. My mother was supposed to take me, you know, so we could compete in the egg toss, but she had to work, so I'm here by myself. Oh. Are you here with your dad, I asked. My dad? Yeah, I met him at your birthday party. Oh, that wasn't my dad, that was my uncle. Your uncle? I live with him. And I don't know what it was about hearing him say that, but suddenly I felt a kinship with him, a bond, like was me and him against the universe, except only one of us knew it. Do you mind if I draw, he asked. Not at all, I said, much too excitedly given what he said next. By myself. Oh, yeah, sure. I'm sorry. It's just hard to concentrate when I have to talk. Of course. And I usually don't talk this much. Right, right, I answered. I, I don't like talking much either, which made no sense given that just two minutes prior I'd spotted off a majority of the nouns in the English language. And that's where I should have just said goodbye, but I didn't. Instead, I said this. I have a turtle. Huh? A painted turtle. Oh, he eats lettuce. Okay, he said, but I'm going to draw now. Oh, yeah, don't mind me. Sorry, that's the last thing I wanted to say. It's just like, the only reason I'm even saying it is that you live right across the street, and if you ever want to feed him, I can probably arrange that. I mean, he's not big on strangers, but if emotionally he feels a kinship, he would probably be amenable. You know, like he'd be open to you and the feeding, and maybe even a deeper relationship, if, of course, that's what you wanted. Right, he answered. And it was then that I saw his drawing of an oak tree, Spanish moss hanging from its branches like the uncombed hair of an old woman, and I was just about to tell him it was the most beautiful drawing I'd ever seen, when suddenly I noticed something else on the drawing. Egg yolk, which must have splattered onto the canvas from one of my many throws, smearing every bit of ink it touched. I'm so sorry, I said, but he didn't answer. Maybe I can clean it off? But I don't think he even heard me. Instead, he just snatched up all his pens and paper like they were in the path of a charging elephant. Don't leave, I pleaded. I'm, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to do it. Really. And leaning his body weight upon his cane to stand upright, he said only one thing. Please just leave me alone. Chapter 5. Unpromised Land. The only reason I didn't cry all the way home was that my mother picked me up from the park and I didn't want to have to explain all the dumb things I'd done. Plus, she had a surprise. 
The reason I picked you up is to take you to Mrs. Trafaldi's house. Old Lady Trafaldi's house? What for? She's having a party. She's having a party? Yeah, why does that seem odd to you? And it did. Because for one thing, Old Lady Trafaldi lived in one of the oldest homes in our neighborhood. Mrs. Trafaldi's house. And for another thing, she was dead. Trafaldi. Rip. Or at least used to be dead and then somehow undied. Ta-da! Trafaldi. R.I.P. That is, if you believed all the rumors about the strange lady in the old house, of which there were many. There was even some talk she was now just a ghost, a belief fueled by the fact that she could sometimes be seen late at night on her roof, which seemed like something a ghost would do. Something a ghost would do. All of which made the notion of her having a party at least a tad bit unexpected. So what's the party for? I asked my mother. It's an after-party for all the contestants. The egg-tossed contestants? Yep. But I wasn't a contestant, I said. Well, it's not just for the contestants, it's for everyone. I think she wants to do something nice for the neighborhood. Are you going with me? I can't. I just left the meeting I was at to pick you up, but I gotta get back to it. So the party's not really for everyone. Let's not do this again, Saint. You're gonna have a great time. But I was still upset over my mother not participating in the egg toss, not to mention when it happened with Daniel, and so I said, I'm not going, Saint. You told me yourself you always wanted to see the inside of her house. You like old houses. And besides, she's selling it, so if you don't see it now, you probably never will. Why? Who's gonna live in it after? Nobody. It'll be torn down for something new. What? Why? It's in bad shape, and I don't think anyone wants to spend the money to fix it. What a waste, I answered. Old stuff is always better. But my mother wasn't listening, because just as I said it, her old car coughed twice and died. And whenever that happened, she had to pull it over and give it a few moments of rest, like it was an old, tired pony. Old, tired pony. Old, she said as the car rested, is not always better. And taking a deep breath, she took her hands off the steering wheel. Well, while we wait here, I have something I should probably tell you, and don't get all freaked out on me, which ensured that whatever she said next would cause me to freak out on her. I can't take you shopping at Punches next week. It has to be the week after. You're breaking your promise. No, Saint, I'm moving it forward a week. And then you'll move it forward another week. You always do that. I won't. You don't know that, I said. No one knows what's going to happen in the future. It's even worse in the present. I promise to take you shopping at Punches, and I will. You swore on the piñata, Saint. I have a broken down car and a meeting I'm going to be late for. This is not a good time. It's never a good time with you, I said. And you know, sometimes when you talk to your mom and it's a regular old argument, but then you say that one thing or raise your voice and boom, the whole thing goes south. Well, this was that thing. Keep talking to me like that and you watch what happens. She said with a hissing tone that could make cats flee up trees. Cat up tree. Oh, yeah, I answered. Yeah. How about I don't take you at all? Fine, I said, opening the passenger door. I don't want you to take me anyway. Where are you going? I'm walking to the party, I answered, slamming the car door. It's two blocks away. She took a deep breath. Get back in the car, Saint. I'm driving you there. No, I want to be by myself. What for? So you won't get a chance to break any more promises. Chapter 6. Crashing the Party. With all that had happened with the egg toss and Daniel and my mother, I was determined to have an epically bad time at old lady Trafaldi's party. That is, if she hadn't answered the door, dressed as cheese. Great, she said. You're here. You know me? I asked. No, but I know you're just about the right size to wear this. What is it? A mask. What does it look like? So this is a costume party, I asked. No. Then why are we dressing up? I'm dressing up because it's laundry day. And it's the only clean thing I had. So why do I have to dress up? You don't have to. It's a privilege. I'm making you the winged skull of doom, head of the skeleton crew, decrier of merriment. What's that? Too many questions, he answered, handing me the mask. Just try this on. Which I did. Perfect, she said. It fits. Now go forth and hurl curses upon the heads of all those merrymakers inside. Huh? I replied. What for? Because the skeleton crew is jealous of the living, angry over their time-wasting parties. But aren't you the one holding the party? Yes. So then why are you... Because I'm a lonely old lady, now go forth and curse! But what do I say? How do I know? She answered. It was your idea. Say something bad. Like, may the stars fall down upon your miserable heads. No, 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 she said. Nothing that bad, although they deserve it. Because they're miserable people? They are? She asked. Well, you said they deserve it. Yes, but I don't know if they're miserable. I just know they're new to the neighborhood, and I don't like new people. I'm old, I don't like change. So what do I say to them? I don't know. Curse them with stubbed toes, lost keys, bad haircuts. I turned to go, but stopped. I don't like change either, I confided, and I'm not even old. She paused and looked at me thoughtfully. Just go forth and curse! And so I began wandering through the party, where I fit in about as well as a hearse at a Christmas parade. And without the heart to hurl curses upon people I barely knew, I chose instead to explore old Lady Trafaldi's home, stopping in her parlor, mostly because it had no people, but also because it had a large portrait of her. 
which only became unusual when one looked at the bottom, where one could see a skeleton's hand rising from the ground and grabbing her around the ankle. And after staring at the painting for a good ten minutes, I couldn't decide if old Lady Trafaldi had died or hadn't. Or had died, but had come back as cheese! For the reality of old Lady Trafaldi was far stranger than the rumors, about the only thing I did know was that it was hot inside my skull mask, and so I took it off and sat in a chair beside the fireplace, where I noticed a glossy brochure. Your new town! It seemed to be all about the town's plans for a new this and a new that, so I put it in my pocket to read later, hoping it could shed some light on why anyone would tear down a house as old as this. Well, I do have a bone to pick with you, barked a voice from behind me, so I turned around to see one of the children's fathers holding an armful of toys. Get it? He asked. I just love puns. I can keep going if you want. It's okay, I said. Great costume, by the way. Mind if I just use that table over there? He asked. Just looking for a place I can put all these toys. I'm Trevor's dad. But I didn't know any Trevor's. We won the egg toss. He just finished his little shopping spree. It's over already? I asked. Yep. I looked through his poor selection of toys, which consisted mostly of generic trains a person could have bought anywhere. And I mean anywhere. Someone should have talked to me, I said, shaking my head. These aren't even valuable. Uh Uh-oh, he said. Did he make a grave error? (laughs) He paused. Okay, I'll stop. It's no joke, I said. I know every inch of that store. I know it better than my own closet. I could have told him right where to go for the really valuable stuff, not this cookie-cutter clutter. He should have at least consulted with me. Well, he likes trains, so I think he's pretty happy with what he got. Besides, everyone was in a bit of a hurry. They had to clear the store out after. What do you mean, clear it out? Empty the shelves. Get ready for the big show. They had a show? Well, not a show show, just a big boom. I don't know what you're talking about. Punches. What about it? You don't know? No what? I said. They demolished it this afternoon to make room for a coffee shop. Suddenly I felt so dizzy I thought I would collapse. Amazing how fast those crews can work, he added. And without thinking, I put the skull mask back on and said the only thing I could. May the stars fall down upon your miserable head.